In this video, I want to talk about what happens when a wave encounters a barrier. So, here's my barrier. And just like other videos, we have our string here. String that that cell takes the end. He he jerks it upward and he jerks it back down, creating this blue wave pulse that we've come to know so well. Now this this string, Sal's, Sal's doing his normal thing, jerking it up and jerking it down to create his wave pulse, but I, this time, I, I got kind of lazy and I just, I decided to just tie, tie my end of the string to a brick so I could go take a nap. So what happens, what's going to happen is this, as a cell's wave pulse approaches this barrier. <clears throat> so here, cell's wave pulse is just hitting the barrier. Just hitting the barrier. Let's look at what's happening right now at this point here, where the string is tied tied to this brick. So we know just like just like normal, this piece of string is feeling the piece of string just to the left of it moving upward and that's and that's applying a force upward on that piece of string, which normally normally if it if it wasn't attached to this brick, this piece of string would move upward. But since it is attached to the brick, we know that 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 the brick must be applying a force downward to this piece of string to stop it from moving up. A, a force equal and opposite canceling canceling out this other force from this this piece of string just to the left that's already moving up. So let's think about what is going to happen as time time passes by as as Sal's Sal's wave pulse is interacting with this brick. So normally these bits of string as the wave as the wave passes them they'll relax down and, and go back to where they were before at this, this zero point of the line. They'll fall back down. But since this brick is applying a force downward, we have a situation where these pieces of string here will actually overshoot the zero point. They'll go, instead of just going back to where they were before, they'll go further and they'll go down. And then we end up with this case I'm about to draw here. The string. And then these pieces of string came down, and because of this extra force applied by the brick, they actually overshot and went downward. And now we have a wave pulse moving to the left. And and the pieces of string are moving downward as as this as this wave pulse moves to the left. If you remember the last video, we actually saw something very, very similar to this. So in the last video, we had had the string. Eh. We had Sal's blue wave pulse going upward, with the pieces of string moving upward as the wave pulse travels to the right. We had my wave pulse with the pieces of string moving downward as the wave pulse travels to the left. And we said this point, since it feels a force upward from the pieces of string to the left, but it also feels a force downward from the pieces of string to the right, that these forces cancel out and this piece of string actually doesn't go anywhere. So my question to you is, if we just look at the part of the string to the left of this point that can't move. So to the left of what of the point that can't move and here to the left of the point that can't move. Is there any difference at all between these two cases? Is there a difference between between the brick put a, applying a force downward, stopping this point from moving, and and if that force is coming from another wave pulse applying that force downward, stopping this point from moving? Is there a difference? And 
like, well, the answer is is no. There there isn't a difference. At least at least as far as this left part of the 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 string is concerned. Obviously, there's no extra string on this side. Nothing's happening. At, at least, yeah, nothing's happening in this brick. But over here, there is. But as far as this left this left piece of string is concerned. These these pieces of string, this string, this piece of string here doesn't know what's going on at this piece of string. All it knows is the pieces of string directly to its left and directly to its right. So here, when this piece can't move, all this piece to the left of, of this piece that can't move, all it knows is the, the piece to the to the right of it can't move. So it's just going to interact with this piece of string, and it doesn't matter what's going on over here. It just matters that this piece of string can't move. So we end up with actually the same result, where here the waves are interacting. Here the waves are interacting and resulting for a while, they, they cancel each other out and they're flat, but then once they're done interacting with each other, they keep going as if nothing had happened. And so we continue we continue this gray dotted line here. This looks just the same. We have this downward, we have this, this wave pulse where the pieces of the string are moving downward and the wave pulse is moving to the left. And we have that same, same, the same situation over on this side. So now we've discovered this rule that when, when a wave pulse hits, hits a barrier where the, the wave can't move up and down. It will reflect back and it will it will change direction and it will, will invert where if the if the pieces of string were moving upward then they'll now be moving downward and, and vice versa. And and we see that, that the reason for that is actually uh, very similar to to the reason that or or it's very similar to the process where where two waves destructively interfere and then and then come out on the other side. And so hopefully hopefully this all made some sense. And in the next video, I will uh, do a similar example, but with a different kind of barrier. See you in the next video.